What's going on, guys, and welcome to yet another OTA balance patch update. As you guys know, last couple of months, uh, the balance patches have been more or less, uh, you get a buff. You get a buff. Everybody gets a buff. Well, today, we've got a little bit more nerfs. Now, the state of Marvel Snap's meta is in a pretty good spot. In fact, I think it's extremely competitive, and it's pretty healthy. Uh, but we do have a few cards that are starting to be uh, in every freaking deck. Now, today's OTA patch should definitely fix that a little bit, right? We've got ourselves a couple of nerfs, one kind of nerf and then a couple of buffs and one kind of buff and then of course the return of the six cost king pardon the interruption here guys but other cozy here from the multiverse here to talk about today's video sponsor on kai star rail a breakthrough game you might know from the creator of genshin impact hoyoverse with over 80 million downloads in the last five months now guys whether you enjoy gaming on pc or mobile this new fantasy rpg is breathtaking in terms of graphics exhilarating with its gameplay and rich with story characters and its semi-open world now speaking of these characters let's break down the two newest arrivals starting with ambivator lune now, Imbibitor Lune lives up to his name. He is the next awesome damage dealer. You'll harness the power of water to inflict powerful attacks on your enemies and carry the team to victory with his unyielding DPS playstyle. Now, next up is Fu Xuan, and she's going to be perfect for players that love defense and support, which is great and super advantageous in these strategy games. She can aid you in battle against the constant onslaught of opponent's damage, and she also makes an overall excellent damage-reducing character to your squad. So now is the perfect time to start playing Honkai Star Rail, guys. The 1.3 update just hit, adding a massive expansion to the storyline. In my personal testing, I had a lot of fun. It's crazy how good graphics I've gotten, and this game just highlights it to the fullest degree. Now, best of all, if you jump in right now, they're giving away 50 Stellar Jades to the watchers of this channel by using the code on screen or down in the description below. Again, big thanks to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring today's video and the channel. Let's get back to the content. Now, let's go to kick it off there with Dr. Doom, guys. He is returning to his original form with his Doom bots going back to the OG 5 power per bot. Now, it's funny how just one power, really two power, is a massive change to Dr. Doom. In fact, he's going to boost up a ton of decks that are going to get caught up with the otherwise competitive meta. I personally always felt like that he was like the perfect card in Marvel Snap. Uh, even when he got nerfed, I would say a large majority of the player base wasn't like shouting from the rooftops in happiness uh, because most people enjoy Dr. Doom. Now, you can expect a couple things to happen from this. First of all, an immediate impact against like good card decks, things like Silky Smooth a little bit. These like five power heavy decks, Dr. Doom now is a bit of an answer that can spread wide. Uh, that is unless they slot in Dr. Doom and then it's even more of a problem. Uh, but other than that, we have a lot of different decks that are going to be boosted just from Dr. Doom. First of all, on Reveal, you've got Reveal Ramp. Obviously, Patriot decks are going to get a nice boost. Cerebro 5 is one that I'll be testing because it's close to being very, very good. And then obviously he just fits into Lockjaw and a wide variety of plug and play options. Uh, the King has returned. Now we're going to follow that up with another buff to one of Snap's newest cards in Lady Deathstrike. They're going to be giving her a boost in power, taking her from a 5-3 up to a 5-4. Now this small power bump up to a card like Lady Deathstrike is actually uh, kind of massive for the ability that she has. When they launched, they were very careful. Uh, obviously they don't want to make her too strong uh, because she has kind of a crazy ability but she was extremely underpowered. And then they buffed up Forge and well, still very underpowered and kind of niche in a lot of decks. You could tell she was like the worst card in the deck a lot of the times. However, now, I, I don't know, man. I'm going to keep a close eye on Lady Nightmare Fuel here because combined her with Forge and all of a sudden you can kill everything under seven power, which uh, honestly, I'm interested in like Nimrod on your own side. If you can cheat some things out or get X23 involved. Uh, guys, there's a lot of good cards at six power and below. Obviously, we have tons of five power drops that we're kind of addressing today. So I don't know. I think she could be pretty solid under Shuri. You can kill everything under seven power and then combine that with Shang-Chi. And now, like, no card is safe on the board. Now, sadly, it does sunset Mr. Negative and Lady Deathstrike. Not going to be as good. And then even worse, uh, Cerebro 3 with Lady Deathstrike was actually pretty cracked. Uh, or at least a good home for her. And now Cerebro 4 way less played not as consistent and so sadly those decks are gone but such is life as a cerebro fan of course she's a combo card still right but thanos destroy and death x style decks i think are going to be her first home x23 definitely still going to help her out a ton and nimrod could be a curious combo to check out now lastly in the buff department and semi nerf to the zabu darkhawk builds we've got rock slide and this is actually pretty exciting he's going down from a four five 
to a 3-3, which I definitely think is a buff overall. They immediately talk about Darkhawk, and they want to lower having Zabu and him in every build, right? Right now, you got Korg, Zabu, Rock Slide, and then Darkhawk, and then a bunch of four cost drops. And that's it. That's the, a good amount of decks and snap. Maybe throw in Legion and uh, America Chavez, and then throw in a couple cards, and there you go. However, I think this is great for Rock Slide for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's going to be very disruptive on curve. Uh, Korg is a good card to get that rock out early. And now you don't need Zabu to get Rock Slide to pump a couple cards of rocks into their deck. Uh, solid overall. Right now, if you see Rock Slide, he's definitely going to have Darkhawk. Like, there's never a day where these two aren't tied together. And still probably no, because why would you not run him? But he is a disruption tool now. And having a line like Korg, then Black Widow, then Rock Slide is kind of cool. I think this is a very nice buff to make Rock Slide have some form of an identity. I don't know. Darkhawk is such an interesting card because of disruption early builds him up. So you're doing two things in one. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. How do you currently feel on Darkhawk? Is he a problem? What do you even do here? I'm curious. Also, wouldn't it be an OTA patch if I didn't say Surfer, Darkhawk, Rock Slide, is it Copium? Probably. I don't know. So there are the buffs. Let's talk about the nerfs quickly. And these are not surprising at all. We have two cards that are some of the most played in the game. One of these nerfs is going to be somewhat significant. Uh, the other, not so much. And we're going to start there with Legion. Now, Legion was probably the most whiffed card by the community. I mean, who in their right mind would think this was going to be a bad card? Really don't think he's going to be meta-defining in any sort of the matter. No. But it, in my opinion, I think Legion's going to be dog water, but you're on the Legion tree. I mean, to be fair, I also said this. I think he's going to be a cheeky card. I think it's a lot of fun. I think Conquest will be its best spot, his best spot. But I had no freaking idea. Now, they'll be taking down Legion from a 5-8 down to a 5-7. Now, this is not that big of a deal, guys, because, well... Uh, Legion is going to be Legion, right? He has the ability to instantly flip the game on a dime, changing all the locations. Uh, your opponent was maybe depending on a closed down location, or they needed, I don't know, Nidavellir to get that plus five power for their Venom. Legion could change that in a moment's notice. Legion's still going to Legion, right? I mean, he has such a good and cool ability, especially in terms of just insane cube wealth, right? You can get awesome cube game with him. It's important that he exists, especially with how good these Limbo Magic decks are. They kind of need to coexist together. Uh, but man, this guy is awesome, right? If they're wanting Onslaught Citadel, you know, for double on going, get rid of it. Uh, if they uh, have a lockdown location, get rid of it. Legion is still a good card. Now, the other nerf is to Captain Marvel. And they just took her down from that five cost down to a four cost. And you know, this is what OTAs are for. They're now taking her down one power point. And this is for good reason. Uh, guys, they say Captain Marvel has been one of the best performing cards in all of Snap. And they're in the best two performing decks. Uh, for a card that is trying to win you the game, this is just extremely consistent in what it does. And then combine that with like the growth of these Angela Craven based decks where she was getting another plus two power or the Rise of Forge. She was everywhere. I just did the meta deck report. She was in like 10 of these decks. I think this is actually going to hurt her quite a bit because of what she does trying to win you the game. One less power. That's a lot of cards that she's going to lose to. Uh, and then combine that, right, with Dr. Doom and his popularity. It just takes a Doom bot to kind of match out and beat out her power now. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how much she does survive. Although she still does what she does at a pretty high level. So there you go, guys. Another OTA, you know, somewhat nerf heavy. But again, uh, it's going to be cool to see Dr. Doom. I think his buff is going to be a lot better than people think. Because it'll take a bunch of decks up with it to match these other competitive decks. And then, of course, we have Rock Slide in the experimentation. Uh, guys, let me know what cards you think need to be buffed in the next OTA. Always curious what the community thinks. As always, I want to thank you guys for checking out today's video. If you have yet to subscribe, it means a lot. If you want to take a second, maybe two. Hell, I'll give you three. Uh, it'd be cool. Anyway, guys, have a good one. Have a great one. Until the next one, happy snapping. If you didn't subscribe, I don't know, bad snapping?